tis the season, the most wonderful time of the year. Celebration with friends and family, it's time to pay tribute to this jolly month. So join us as we get into the Christmas spirit. You've heard of Elf on the Shelf, but this is Venom on the Shelf. Now we spoke about Tim Burton's Batman, but what about Batman Returns? Now originally Tim Burton did not want to do a sequel unless a really new and exciting idea arose. He was instead going to work on a second Beetlejuice movie, which still hasn't been made. Stupid corn dog. But he was eventually convinced to do this instead with a lot more creative control this time around, paying Michael Keaton an insane $11 million to come back, which the studio was heavily against, but after many rewrites, the movie was finally made, some loving it as much as the original, but others feeling like it was too dark in comparison. <laughs> Tim Burton making a dark movie? Never. Maybe. However, Burton and Keaton actually prefer this one to the original movie. The thing is, the third film, Batman Forever, was slated for having mixed messages. One minute it's dark and trying to be serious and edgy, other times it's goofy, cheesy and ridiculous. But all of that is evident right here in this film and yet it gets forgiven for some reason. But there's only one way to explain what the hell it is I'm talking about. This is Batman Returns. So we open to see the future Penguin's parents, one of which is played by Pee Wee Herman, who clearly loved the role so much he reprised it in Gotham. It's just weird casting. Weird idea. And hey, it's Christmas! But because their baby is physically deformed, they leave him in a cage! Yeah, suddenly the Dursleys don't seem so bad now, do they? He even kills and eats their cat right in front of them. Because... he was born part demon, I don't know. His parents dump him in a river, but my biggest question is why? I mean, they don't act shocked or surprised or even scared when he kills their pet, so it obviously is a frequently occurring thing, so why don't they do this sooner? Did they go through like five or six cats before thinking, hey, maybe we should get rid of this demon baby of ours? I cringe, Mr. Mayor. So the opening credits play as the baby has a nice trip down the sewers, avoiding Pennywise and the Ninja Turtles while it's at it, but this baby is, for some reason, completely silent. Because he's evil. And oh yeah, Batman Forever is cheesy and goofy. This one has parents who have a deformed baby who's so evil they dump him in the sewers, he takes a trip down there, and then he's raised by penguins. This is a serious film. And why the hell are penguins in the sewers anyway? That sort of pesky nonsense. We then cut to Gotham 33 years later, and I must admit, this is just a reminder of why I love these ones so much more than Nolan's. They actually look and feel like a comic book brought to life. Nolan's were great and everything, but they just looked like generic action movies. So they light up the local Christmas tree while the penguin lurks in the sewers, and it turns out that over the years, he's considered a myth, but has been spotted a few times. But Alfred, once again played by Michael Goff, seems to have some kind of psychic powers and senses his presence. It's stupid. Meanwhile, Max Shrek, played by Christopher Walken, is a millionaire businessman who plans to build a power plant, and Michelle Pfeiffer is his nerdy assistant. Yeah, someone who looks like Michelle Pfeiffer is nerdy, has no friends, and is a complete loser. This is all just a bad dream. She does try to speak up but gets shut down because she's a loser, just go with it. So Christopher Walken is basically the town hero. Now you're probably thinking, this character sounds an awful lot like Harvey Dent. And you'd be right because this character was originally supposed to be Harvey Dent. In fact, this movie was going to end with Harvey Dent getting involved in an explosion, which would then lead into the third movie with him becoming Two-Face. But Tim Burton just flat out refused to make a direct sequel, and he didn't want to go with that, so he just did this instead. So he gives away some presents, but whoops, he left his speech at the office. Thankfully though, he remembers that he's Christopher Walken and he improvises it. But the Penguin decides to pretty much rip off the Joker's parade scene from the first film and his goons wreck the place. Meanwhile, Bruce, once again played by Michael Keaton, is sitting around wondering what the hell he made Jack Frost before he sees the bat signal. Which is fucking reflected directly into his hat. What, and no one's ever noticed or questioned this? In the last film, he hung himself upside down like a bat in front of people. Here, he has reflectors of the bat signal shining directly into his house. He sucks at keeping his secret identity. I want some respect. So all hell breaks loose before Batman shows up and kicks some ass. Even setting someone on fire. Oh, but he doesn't kill people. Definitely. Afraid not. But uh-oh, Selina gets taken hostage. <laughs> you missed. Okay, that was funny. Wow. The Batman. Or is it just Batman? 
hot. <laughs> okay, Michael Keaton is so badass. He doesn't even have to say anything. It's just those eyes. He's so creepy, he is so awesome. During the chaos, Christopher Walken hides and stands directly on a sewer grate because he's an idiot. <laughs> Told ya. Can you tell Tim Burton made this? So Walken wakes up to see the penguin himself, played by Danny DeVito. And despite the issues I do have with this film, DeVito really nails this role. He basically wants to join forces with Walken. He considers them both monsters in different ways, and he believes it's time for him to finally emerge to the world, but he needs his help to find out who he and his parents really are. So what was the plan here? Start a riot and just hope that Christopher Walken wanders onto a sewer grate? I mean, none of his goons try to kidnap him at any point. You tell me. Naturally, Walken is a bit hesitant, but Penguin has a backup plan. Oh, a batch of toxic waste from your clean textile plant. Why didn't it burn the container it was in? Anyway, he bribes him with toxic waste that was found on his property that could make or break his master plan. But this is the major issue. This is Christopher Walken! Christopher goddamn Walken! And this is one of the worst performances I have ever seen! His face barely ever changes for this entire movie. He shows no emotion no matter what is taking place. He is terrible in this! <laughs> Remember me? I'm Fred's hand. Hey, you wanna greet any other body parts? Oh yeah, but Batman Forever is the goofy and silly one. Yeah, yeah, this is the serious film. Oh my god, it's true. So Selena returns home and she is literally a lonely, crazy cat lady. So Selena talks to Walken about work, but I just don't care. But basically she finds out his power plant plan is to actually drain the city of his energy. What did curiosity do to the cat? I wonder how many cat-related puns we're gonna get in this film. Oh well, he intimidates her and he even threatens to kill her, but nah, he's only joking. Huh? <laughs> huh? <laughs> wow, his face actually changed! Well done, Chris! For a second there, you really frightened me. <laughs> Jesus! So yeah, Walken launches Selina out the window, but that's okay, because loads of cats show up, lick and bite her fingers, and this magically resurrects her, and now gives her magic cat powers. Because of course! But remember, Batman Forever is the goofy and silly one! We're both perceived as monsters! So she starts doing cat things like downing milk, then she attacks her phone and destroys her teddies, wrecks her clothes, throws crap all over the place, spray paints a doll's house and puts on a skin tight leather costume because... I guess this is what you do when you just came back from the dead. It's a lot like that. So during another speech because... Apparently that's all they ever do in this city, a random gymnast appears and kidnaps a baby... Which... Nobody even tries to stop for some reason and jumps down to the sewers and they set it up to make it look like the penguin saved him, which Somehow works. I mean, isn't this really obvious what actually happened? Or is everyone in Gotham a complete moron? How can anyone be so pathetic? So he goes on TV and pleads to find his parents to find out why they abandoned him. Probably because you ate 16 of their cats! He even starts going through birth certificates, but how could he even do this? How would this ever work when he doesn't know his or their names? Where would you even start? And also, how did the penguin learn to read? How did the penguin learn to speak English? Did the penguins change his nappies? Clean him? Literally raise him? How is he a 33 year old man raised by penguins in the fucking sewers? What? So he does somehow find out their names and mourns at the grave before revealing his own to be Oswald Cobblepot. <laughs> Ah, uh, no matter how many Batman films they make, you just can't beat a good old-fashioned mugging. But this time it's Selina, now dressed as Catwoman, who shows up to kick some ass. I am Catwoman. Hear me roar. But... Cats don't roar. I mean, big cats do, like lions and tigers and stuff, but... She's Catwoman. She's not big cat woman. This lion sucks! I suppose you feel better now, sir. So Bruce confronts Walken about the penguin, but much to his surprise, Selina shows up. Yeah, we've met. Have we? Oh, I'm sorry. You know what? I mistook me for somebody else. Sorry. You mean mistook me? I mistook me. Yeah, yeah. That's what I, isn't that what I said? No, 
I don't think so. Does he know the definition of secret identity? I mean, people can make fun of Clark Kent and Superman all they want, but this guy's supposed to be the world's greatest detective. Simple stuff that the good people of Gotham take for granted. So Walken visits the penguin and even feeds him a trout just in case you forgot. He's a literal penguin, he's a penguin, did you forget that he's a penguin? But he lures him to a surprise party. <laughs> Still, could be worse. My nose could be gushing blood. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious! Are we supposed to take this meant to be disturbing, but it's so funny, and yeah, Batman Forever is the goofy and silly one! Oh, and Penguin's now elected mayor, wonderful. So some riots begin before Batman does his thing once again. One dude even has a damn rocket launcher aimed at him and he just stands there taking a sweet ass time to look around, mess with his gadget and then stops them and it somehow works. Elsewhere, Catwoman breaks into a museum and scares off some security guards. This huge dude tries to mess with bats but gets a bomb strapped to him. But he doesn't kill. Can we just stop pretending that Batman doesn't kill people, please? He kills in nearly every Batman movie. Well, I guess we're gonna find out. He even gives this sadistic smile as the man explodes. Jesus! The Catwoman sets off some gas while Batman finds Penguin. She with you? I thought she was with you. Also, she blows up the museum. Just because. I saw her first. Gotta fly. <laughs> What? I saw her first! So I'm running away! How could you? I'm a woman! I'm sorry, I... I... <laughs> Accurate and funny. So she knocks Batman off a roof, but he does manage to hang on. Life's a bitch, now so am I. Okay, that line is pretty cool. But he manages to fight back, she ends up on the receiving end of it, but he chooses to save her anyway. They have a rather sexual moment where she wants to know who he is and even feels his bat boner, but then hits him. Before she gets knocked into a truck full of cat litter. What the hell are the odds? Did they mention she's a cat? Just in case you forgot, she's a cat! So Batman mopes around for a bit, depressed that he didn't get laid, while the penguin kind of just... Does his thing. A woman even ends up hitting on him, but why the hell would anyone want to bang him, no matter how rich or powerful he is? <sighs> Just the pussy I've been looking for. She's so cringy. So Catwoman wants his help to get rid of Batman, but he isn't sure that he can trust her. So... She eats a live bird! Usual reaction. By the way, Michelle Pfeiffer actually put a real live bird in her mouth for that. Because... because why wouldn't you? I want in. So do I. Then she licks herself. Because she's a cat? Did they mention she's a cat? In case you forgot she's a cat, she's a fucking cat! Bear in mind, Catwoman 2004 does obvious cat jokes and he gets slated, but this one, she does it all the time, and who cares? She's a fucking cat! Oh, and exactly how is he casting these shadows on the ceiling without any light when he's laying on a bed? It's human nature to fear the unusual. So Bruce finds Selene. I don't even get it. Why is she still parading around as a normal person? It makes sense for Bruce to have a secret identity, but she snapped and supposedly gone insane. It makes no sense for her to keep up with this sane alter ego. Oh well, this is kind of funny. Catwoman is thought to weigh 140 pounds. I don't know how these hacks sleep at night. It's not even accurate. Batman blows it. You probably saved millions of dollars in property damage alone. Although you didn't save money on property damage. You literally just stood there while the building went up in flames. So they arrange to meet for dinner while Penguin is up to no good. Who are you? The mayor? Who's deformed and has been on TV constantly? Where the hell have you been, lady? And the truth frightened her? Well, there are two truths. You know, and she had trouble reconciling them because I had trouble um, reconciling them. That's it. That's the only acknowledgement Vicky Vale gets in this film. Kim Basinger wasn't even asked to come back. 
She was just, yeah, yeah, she just, they're going the Mission Impossible route. Different bird each film, why not? Sounds familiar. So Selena tries to get the truth out of Bruce, but he's too stubborn, but that doesn't stop them from swapping spit, but they stop before discovering each other's wounds. Also, Penguin killed that woman earlier, but with a batarang, so naturally Batman is framed for the murder, yay. Bruce and Selena both come up with lame excuses to leave, but first they have to have a whole comedy routine where they give Alfred ridiculous things to tell each other. It's only a little funny. Sure. So Batman shows up to save the actress. The one who they said had already died. No sweat. I'll just tell the police I was kidnapped by an ugly bird man with fish breath. Somebody say fish? <laughs> I haven't been fed all day. These one-liners are terrible! Did they mention she's a cat? <laughs> Eat floor. Batman just said that. Uh! High fiber. I'm gonna kill myself! This dialogue is awful! Oh, and their fight has no music and it just comes across as really clunky and awkward. So she kidnaps the actress and manages to get away as Batman gives chase. They end up on a rooftop where Penguin uses an umbrella of bats to make her fall while Bats is nearby and again gets the blame. And by the way, he just stands there! He doesn't do anything to at least try to save her! And also, sorry to keep comparing, but people always say the plot in Batman Forever is so forced and contrived with like some of Two-Face and Riddler's plan. What do you call this? They have literally lured Batman onto a rooftop to then murder a woman, have a fall off the roof while Batman's nearby so they can frame him. Oh yeah, that's fine. That's not contrived and forced. Shut up. So she ends up on top of Batman where some mistletoe just so happens to be. Lucky bastard. I tried to save you. Mm, it seems like every woman you try to save ends up dead. <laughs> One. Yeah. Oh well, Batman spreading his cape and soaring off does look pretty badass and creepy, it is so awesome. In an interesting character change though, Catwoman is clearly upset that Penguin actually killed the woman which wasn't part of their plan. It shows a lot of sympathy that her character has, where she isn't a full on villain but not a huge hero either. But then Penguin wants to fuck. So what are we waiting for? Let's consummate our fiendish union. Please don't, I don't want to see that. But she rejects him so he sends her up on some spinning umbrella thing. I don't even get it. He's a penguin, everything he does is penguin related, but yeah, he has an umbrella fetish. Is he half penguin, half Mary Poppins? What are you talking about? But she immediately breaks free into a greenhouse, but don't worry, we have two more movies before this bitch shows up. So basically, Tim Burton has made Batman a villain years before Christopher Nolan did it, but Penguin manages to take control of his car to make him run down people, and he's controlling it through a fucking car simulator! It's a fucking toy! How can people rip on Batman Forever for being child friendly and goofy and silly? This is Penguin, this demonic creature, and he's controlling the Batmobile through a fucking car simulator. Most of the movie he's going around on a giant ass rubber duck. Later on you've got penguins waddling around with fireworks strapped to their backs. And we're supposed to take any of that seriously? At least Batman Forever, the shifts felt natural and smooth. It was dark, but not too dark, and then I felt the cheesy and goofy nature worked and catered towards the kids, while the darker scenes were for the adults. But here, it's completely off balance. It's either a demonic entity that worships Satan, or goofy ass cheese fest. There's like no in between. And also, people shit on Batman Forever, or Batman and Robin for having too many villains, same with Spider-Man 3. This started it all! Catwoman is handled okay, but that's mostly down to Pfeiffer's amazing performance. DeVito does great, but his character is written so poorly I don't care. And you've also got Max Shrek who's boring as piss. This is overkill, there's just too much. There's hardly any room for Batman. Anytime Batman shows up, I'm like, oh yes, a Batman film. This movie fucking sucks. You got kind of a kind of a dark side, don't you? So Batman manages to regain control of the Batmobile just in time to stop himself from murdering an old lady because, you know, he doesn't kill. <laughs> See? He doesn't kill. Security? Who let Vicky Vale into the Batcave? I'm sitting there working and I turn around there she is. Oh, hi Vic. Come on in. He's got a point, stop it, Alf! But of course, because Bruce is God, he messes with Penguin's microphone at the 76th speech this week, where he plays audio of him insulting the locals that he... somehow recorded. Naturally, everyone turns on him and he runs for the hills, and they even start shooting at him! Jesus, what the hell?! They don't even know what the hell he's done yet, he's just lied to them as far as they know, they don't know he's killed anyone. But oh well, he has to ride his giant duck back to the sewers, because this film isn't goofy or silly one bit! 
I didn't say that. While Penguin plots revenge, Bruce heads to a masquerade party with Selina and they're the only ones not in costume. This is actually genius. They don't need masks because their secret identities are their disguises. It's a really clever move. Listen, I'm sorry about yesterday, but I had a pretty big deal come through. Fall through, actually. It's okay. I had to go home and uh, feed my cat. <laughs> Did they mention she's a cat? So they dance, he assumes she's dating Christopher Walken for some reason which she laughs off before pulling out a gun and threatens to kill. But he tries to talk her out of it because, you know, he doesn't kill. They do kiss instead though. This relationship is so weird. Thank you. But an explosion occurs, not harming a single person. But let's ruin this moment with Fuckface rising up on a giant fucking rubber ducky! How are you taking this seriously? You're coming with me, you great white dope! To die way down in the sewer! Not ship. If you have an iota of human feeling, take me instead. If you have an iota of talent, please give me some. You are Christopher Walken emote! How are you so bad in this? <laughs> A little pied penguin action. Because this is the fucking serious film! So Penguin decides to steal all the firstborns of Gotham. He wants to do this because... He wants to put them in a baby stew, I have no idea. But Batman puts an end to it in 20 seconds anyway, so... This was entirely pointless. Could have been cut out entirely, really. Doesn't affect the plot whatsoever. This film blows. First, second, third, and fourth form. Why be male? Male and female. Hell, the sexes are equal. With their erogenous souls, blow sky giving an intense speech to a bunch of penguins with rockets strapped to their backs. Are you expect me to take this seriously? Okay, you got a point. So they march to Gotham, you know, with rockets on their backs. Christopher Walken tries to get a monkey to pass the keys to the cage. Serious film. This is the serious film. Something is wrong. Something has jammed the signal. Okay, that's a little funny. I don't even know if it was supposed to be though. So Penguin speeds off on his super serious rubber duck and we actually have a chase scene. We are having a chase scene with the Batmobile and a giant duck! But it doesn't last long because... <laughs> it forgot to duck! Oh please. So Penguin tries to get Batman to remove the mask for whatever reason. Maybe he just needs a Tinder day. I don't know. But he fights back and pulls out some trigger or something. Why don't I just put a bomb on him like the other guy? It's confusing. He looks over and the penguins are now in danger or something. But it's reverse psychology because Penguin hits it and the rockets fly off. Things blow up for no reason. I wish I cared. But meanwhile, Catwoman finally gets a hold of Christopher Walken. I don't know what you want, but I know I can get it for you. Unless it's acting classes, then I'm fucked. So Batman takes his mask off. For no reason. I mean, Selina already figured out that he was Batman, like, at the party. They both realised their secret identities, so... Removing his mask here is entirely pointless. Except now Christopher Walken knows who you are, you dumbass. Selina Kyle. You're fired. Okay, after all of that, and then he says that line, that is pretty funny. Bruce Wayne, why are you dressed up like Batman? <laughs> and so is that. You killed me. The Penguin killed me. Batman killed me. That's three lives down. You got enough in there to finish me off? She literally has nine lives. How? To walk and shoots Batman and then Catwoman a few times, but she's still alive. And so is he, because he's Batman. And then she electrocutes Walken and for some reason kisses him as well. I mean... Why the need for the kiss just kind of makes no sense, just overkill. Oh yeah, I forgot that he was a thing. Just end! Tim Burton clearly had no idea how to wrap up this crap. And after all of this dramatic build-up, Penguin pulls out his stupid umbrella again, which I'm still not taking seriously, and then he dies anyway! So him coming back was completely pointless. Then these awfully fake-looking penguins show up. Why are they in the sewers anyway? Then Bruce dramatically saves Selina's cat just because. And then for a final teaser, she comes back! Yeah, she doesn't appear in any movie after this, but yeah, yeah, she's back now! And that was Batman Returns. I hate this movie. 
The first was a masterpiece. It set the standards for comic book films and had great characters, story and set design. Here, the sets still hold up. The acting from everyone except Walken is amazing. Keaton continued to be the best live action Batman. Pfeiffer is entrancing as Catwoman. DeVito is unrecognisable as the Penguin. But the writing is all over the place. There's too much going on to get invested. There's a lot of filler for no reason. And it can't make up its mind if it wants to be dark or goofy. It's all over the place and in my mind, just a completely unstructured mess.